Welcome everybody to the call. My name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of Teamsy. Thank you, Stephanie, for inviting me tonight. I'm excited to talk to you guys about Teamsy. Um, a couple things that I want you to know right off the bat. Teamsy is going to help you become super mega efficient. You'll be able to do all your income producing activities in less than one hour a day. I'll show you how in a few minutes. The other thing that I want you to understand is Teamsy is not just an application that, that helps you get organized. It's actually a philosophy. A, an approach and it's based on relationship marketing. In other words, you're never ever going to feel like an icky salesperson using Teamsy. And the third thing I want you to know is it's a system that's easy to follow. You always know what to do. It's so simple. You just turn it on and do it every day. You never wonder what to do next to build your business. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you through a little bit of training first on relationship marketing, which is, as I mentioned a second ago, the underlying foundational philosophy behind Teamsy. Once I could do a little bit of that, and I think you guys will enjoy that, then I'll take you into the app. I'll show you how to set it up. I'll show you how to crush a power hour in really more like 30 minutes. Um, I'll take you through the whole process of starting a conversation, having a conversation, inviting someone to learn about the business, and following up like a pro. Okay, and I'll show you how you can track that automatically as you go through Teamsy. And then we'll do a QA and a at the end. Now, I know you guys have been on lots of calls and your brains are soggy, which is totally fine. You can take naps in the middle of whatever if you want. But my goal is to pack so much content into this training um, that you feel like you got tons of value. So I'm just going to go for it. It's going to feel like you're sipping water from a fire hose, but we are also recording. So if you miss anything, you want to go back, you can always come back and watch the recording. Sound good? Okay. First things first, let me jump into this presentation. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is this, how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. Oh, one more thing. If you guys are... Um, in front of your computer or your phone and you can turn on your camera. I would love to see your faces while I'm talking to you guys Don't worry. You're only this big so I won't be able to see detail <laughs> There you go. How to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. Okay Just a little backstory about me because I know you guys probably don't know me uh, You know that I'm the creator of Teamsy, but my background is in business coaching and consulting I've been helping people buy. I'm sorry not buy been helping people build their business um, by relationship for 15 years. That's what I've been doing as a profession. Um, I stumbled into network marketing by accident, probably like a lot of you guys. I found some products that really helped me. And, um, and I was just an, a, an enthusiastic customer. And then I realized there was an amazing business opportunity involved. And as I started looking at the business opportunity, as a consultant myself, I said, hmm, now to do this right, I would need the tools to help me leverage my time. Because I knew that I had maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half a day extra that I could apply to this business, so I needed to use that time effectively and efficiently, right? Because you can be busy and not be effective, right? You guys have experienced that. So I started looking for the tools. I started going out and looking, you know, in other industries, there's great tools like this, and there just was nothing in our, in our industry, one, that was built for our industry, two, that was easy to use, and three, that was based on building relationships. It seems like everything in our industry, and I appreciate, Stephanie, what you were telling me just before I started to record. It seems like everything in our industry is teaching this whole go for no philosophy. You guys know what I'm talking about? This like find them, fleece them, forget them. And, and it is, it's like, for me, it's, I think it's gross personally. Do, do you, you know, here's the thing. Does it work? Yeah, it does. And there are people who are successful doing it, but there are other ways that are just as effective, if not more effective. I'm going to show you one today that's more effective. The bottom line is no matter what approach you choose in business, it has to be congruent with your personal core values. It has to be enjoyable to you and it has to be effective, right? So I wanted something based on relationships. I couldn't find it. Long story short, we built Teamsy because it didn't exist. Now, just so you guys know, before I jump into this relationship marketing training, I want you to understand we've had, we've been in business just over two years. We've had more than 70,000 network marketers use Teamsy, which is pretty cool. Just as a, we just grassroots, it spread like wildfire. I'm hoping that with you guys will spread like wildfire. Our average, our users right now that are active are averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. Just so you guys understand the stats. So they're averaging 21 customers, nine recruits over 90 days right now. Okay, so let's jump into relationship marketing. What is relationship marketing? First off, I want you guys to have a mindset shift because people think relationship marketing is selling stuff to your friends right? That's not what relationship marketing is. Relationship marketing is where you're actually, your marketing strategy is building relationships. 
But I want you to understand too, from a business perspective, relationship marketing, hold on a second, my screen stopped going with me. Here we go. It's a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of the business. You have to understand it's not just hugging on people and singing kumbaya. It's actually a system that will generate predictable business for you, okay? And here's the principle I want you to get. You are in the lead generation business. That is the business you're in. You're in the lead generation business. And no matter how busy you are, no matter how many customers you signed on today or, or um, you know, team members, if you didn't do anything to generate new leads in your business, you didn't do any of those activities, then you did not build your business today. Does that make sense? You just got to get that mindset. Okay. Next principle I want to share with you is this. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Okay, so let me simplify everything I'm going to teach you tonight and just to, to this. Your job is to meet people and build relationships with them. That's it. And the people you already know, which you've luckily spent your whole life meeting people, you got to go deeper with. That's it. That's how you build a huge thriving business. Now I'm going to show you the system to do that as we go. What we do with relationships is we turn them into advocates by investing time and in providing outstanding service. Okay, we turn them into advocates. See, the traditional approach in our industry is you ask everybody if they're interested. Most people say no, and you run with the ones that say yes. Meanwhile, all the people that said no, you alienated and fractured that relationship, right? And that's why so many of us are terrified of doing this business, because that's what we think is gonna happen. With relationship marketing, all the people that aren't ready now, you're turning into advocates. You're investing in them. You're building those relationships. And I'm going to teach you guys tonight just a little bit in the time I have how you get people excited about your passion, even if they're not interested in your products right now. You get them on board your mission so they become advocates for your mission. Make sense? Okay. Next principle. And I know I'm going fast, guys. Sorry. I want to give you a lot. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. And again, we're taught, how to, we're taught to do so many things that are disingenuous. You, need, you cannot do anything that violates trust, even a hair, because you need to be building trust. And it takes so much energy to, to overcome those little things that we do to violate trust. Make sense? Now, here's the cool part. Trust makes the work fun. If somebody trusts you even just a little bit, you don't have to convince them, you don't have to sell them, you get right to helping them, right? Also, trust takes the ickiness away. That icky feeling that we're so paranoid about having, about being the icky salesperson with trust, that's not an issue for either side, and then you get to go for yes. Instead of going for no, you're going for yeses because you're building trust with people. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you actually build trust? I'm gonna share with you guys real quick the four essential ingredients to building trust. Okay, and this is important because I'm going to then show you how to apply these principles in Teams. Okay, one is chemistry. I'll go through them quickly and then I'll break them out for you. One is chemistry, two is character, character, three is competence. Okay, competence, and four is consistency. Consistency. I see some of you guys taking notes, it's a good idea. There's some good stuff here chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right, let's break, let's go through these. If I can get my uh, computer to co cooperate with me. Okay, chemistry. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Real basic, right? It's just, it's just hard to do business with somebody that you don't like, true? Yeah, so where is it you have common ground with someone? Figure out where you have in common. Well, you have something in common with everybody, okay? So my encouragement to you guys and for you to encourage your teams is this, stop spending time drawing the lines of difference and start looking for commonality, okay? Uh, people that don't own a business can be opinionated. Business owners need to find common ground. Hold on a second, now my thing died again. No big deal, we just keep soldiering through it. Number two, character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. 
okay, please notice something about my definition. You don't have character. You do it. It's something you do. It's not something you have. Okay? And a lot of times we think our character is just an intrinsic part of us. If somebody questions our integrity, we get uh, offended. Right? Anybody like that? I am. I'm like that. But I have to remind myself, if I am not demonstrating care for this person, how would they know my character? Right? Is there like a database somewhere where you can look up and see somebody with good character? No, you have to demonstrate it daily. Okay, number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. I need to know, you know, I'm, I need help with my health, with my vitality, with my energy. Do you know enough about your products to help me with that? How many of you guys would say yes? That's good. And now that I'm, you know, if I'm in love with this business, are you, do I feel like you could mentor me? Are you the person I'm going to trust to mentor me in this business? I need to know, are you competent that way? Now, real quick on this, anybody new, kind of new, anyone? I can only see five people at a time. So if you raised your hand, I missed you. Here's the thing for new people. A lot of times you're told when you're new, don't worry, just fake it till you make it. Have you guys ever heard someone tell you that? Just fake it till you make it. Okay, here's my encouragement to you. Don't do that. <laughs> remember it's about building trust and if you fake it anything at all why should they ever trust you okay be real be authentic be you if you're brand new that's cool you lean into your team hey if you you at the most knowledgeable people in the world on these products are one text message away from me if you have any questions i want you to ask me and i'll get you the answer right away okay let them know hey i'm new too but my um my upline are amazing. They're, they'll train us together. We will have all the support we need. Let's go. Let's run in the business together. Okay, so when you're new, you lean into your upline. Guys, don't fake your competence. Develop it. Lean into your team when you don't have it yet. Make sense? And teach your people, those leaders on the call, teach your people to lean into your competence. Don't tell them to fake it. Okay, it's really important. Now, these are important because as I'm going to talk to you guys about connecting with people and building relationships in Teamsy, I want you to understand these are, the, these are your goals. You want to build chemistry. You want to demonstrate your character and your competence. The, your goals are in the conversations is that this comes across. Make sense? Now, number four is going to be what brings it all together. But before we get there, I want to give you one more principle. This is the principle behind these three. Something's going on where if I don't click my button for a minute or two, it stops. Is this, people only care about three things. When they're gonna do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? By the way, if you get objections in your business, objections come from these questions. All objections. These aren't questions somebody thinks out loud, these are questions they feel in their heart. Make sense? And this is how you know you're doing great on building trust, on building a relationship. Over time, these questions go away for people when your relationship is strong. So here's just a little side note, I could do a whole hour just on this objection thing. If you're getting objections in your business, learn to overcome them. If you don't know how to overcome the objections, Stephanie will teach you, the upline will teach you how to overcome the objections. But understand, you need to work on that relationship still. Overcoming the objection is step one. It's helping them get out of their way so they can get the help they need. You need to keep investing in that person. Okay, no, number four, consistency. Consistency. How many of you guys, when you hear that word, you're like, ugh, consistency. But here's the thing. You guys are really great at consistency. How many of you guys would say, would say to me that you think you're good at being consistent? You, most of us don't feel like we are, but we're really great at being consistent. Unfortunately, not always in the habits we want, right? How many of you guys are really good about using your products? How many pro, consistent product of the products? Yeah, it's good. How about um, anybody great at posting on social media, sharing your story and your journey with people? Good. So see, there's a couple of good things. Um, here's a principle I want to share with you real quick before I move on. Sorry, guys. I really need an IT person to run this for me while I'm doing it. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. I actually pulled this uh, principle, paraphrased it from a favorite book of mine. It's called Influence 
psychology of persuasion, you guys should definitely, well, I think I went too far. Yep, got excited. Definitely add this to your list. Influence psychology of persuasion, it looks like this. Such a great book. But he talks about this. People respect consistency and desire for themselves. How many of you guys have kids? Any parents? Everybody? <laughs> Is it important to be consistent if you want your kids to trust you? Yeah. Is it important for them to be consistent for you to trust them? Absolutely. It's the most important thing. People respect it and it, it helps build trust. But you guys also need to understand that people will be drawn to your team when you are consistent. In fact, being a leader is the best thing for you because it helps you to be consistent because you feel like you need to for your team, right? How many of you guys have been told that you're an inspiration, that people find what you're doing inspiring? Have you guys heard that? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I mean, isn't that kind of crazy? Like, that's what you hope to inspire people, but doesn't it still kind of shock you and humble you when somebody says that to you? But listen, what this is what's inspiring, your consistency. It's not because you can jump... Uh, over tall buildings or fly or anything. It's because they see you being consistent. That is what they respect and want in their life. It's huge. It's huge. Consistency. So we talk about all those things, building chemistry, demonstrating your character and your confidence and doing it consistently, right? So we talked about you guys are doing a couple of things great, right? You're, you're doing, you're, um, you're using your, your products, you're posting on social, but how many of you are as consistent with your relationships? And this is, the, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road because, because we got to be as consistent with staying in touch with people as we are to say posting on social media and things like that. Here's the principle I want you guys to get if I can get this thing to work. Bear with me, guys. I'm like that person who has your phone and they're scrolling too fast and you can't see what the heck they're doing. The principle I want you to understand on this one is people won't believe you till they see you. People won't believe you till they see you. And here's what I mean by this. You've started this journey. You're building your Purium business. Things are going great. Oh my gosh, it's amazing, right? And you're sharing this. And your pe people are watching you on social media and they are, they are engaged. Maybe they're not liking. Maybe they're not commenting, but they're watching. You're like a TV show they can't take their eyes off of. And they're excited for you. And you post this post, hey, I'm looking for five women to mentor in the business. Let me know if you're interested or, or I, you know, I just qualified for this trip to the Bahamas. How many people want to come with me? Whatever it is, they've seen these posts. And here's the thing, you're, they're not clicking. Have you noticed that? Not very many people are commenting. It's because they don't believe you mean them. Why would they think they, you are inviting them personally when they have not heard from you since high school? They're watching you. They're interested but they don't believe you until they see you, until they hear from you. This is what you guys gotta have to understand is that relationship building is a contact sport. You have to be in contact with people. If you want a relationship, you actually have to make contact with them. Okay, now I know your time is scarce. That's why I built Teamsy so that you can stay in touch with everybody you know and do it in just a few minutes a day. It's gonna blow your mind in a few minutes when I get there, trust me. But here's a principle. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships, okay? Write, write this one down. If you haven't been taking notes, take this one. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Now, really quick, I'm going to jump into Teamsy in a second. I just want to give you one example on this really quick before I do it. Because this is an important one. Okay. So how many of you, how many of you guys, oh, let me go so I can see everyone's face. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everyone's got their camera off. Where are you guys? Are you asleep? You sleep. You guys sleep. All right. You guys with your cameras on, you guys are my A pluses. I'll be following you. Okay. Here's the question for you. How many of you have ever received a card from somebody, you know, like somebody you care about and the card had a handwritten sentiment in it and that sentiment caused an emotional reaction. Like it made you feel amazing inside. Did you, has anyone ever received a card like that? Okay. Now, hopefully everybody has question about it then. Once you read that card, and it, it is amazing how the, the emotional impact can happen just from those words that are written. After you read it, did you, were, you, were you able to crumble it up and throw it in the trash can? How many of you guys were able to throw it? Do you guys have a place where you've saved these cards and you just can't bear to part with them, right? And there's times when you think, I need to get rid of these. Or maybe your spouse says, can we get rid of these? And you're like, no. 
It's amazing. People will hold on to a handwritten card forever. In fact, when, when people pass away, what is most treasured by their family are often the letters and cards that are left behind. True? Some of you guys may have experienced this. I know, for example, I, have a, I got a really beautiful one from my wife one time, and I, I keep it in my Bible. Um, I keep it in my Bible for one reason, because if anything happens to me, I know my kids will find it there and I want them to see it. Isn't that cool? And so, by the way, that's a great place to put your favorite one. You put it in your Bible for that reason. Um, the card is something that is amazing. Now look, here's something else. This is a happy birthday postcard. Anyone ever received one of these? This one is from my insurance, life insurance salesman. I get them from my dentist too, and my dog gets them from the veterinary hospital. Pretty cool, right? Now, anybody receive one of these? Do you have one of these in the special place with your favorite cards? Why didn't you save this? This one says, here's to another great year of you. Yeah, because he doesn't want to pay my premium. He's hoping I'll make it 30 years, right? <laughs> this has no value, right? You throw these away, no problem. Why does this have no value? Because it took no time. There's no time invested in this. When somebody wrote you a card, they invested their heart and their time just in you. Undivided attention. They can't play with Facebook and write that note at the same time. Make sense? Investment of time, connecting with people. That's how you deepen relationships. There's no other way. By the way, this, this training isn't about writing note cards to people, but that should be something that you do in addition to connecting you know, through social media in different ways um, because people will save those cards forever. Just make sure you write something really heartfelt in them. Cool? That's, that is your marketing tip, by the way. The marketing collateral people will never throw away. They're not selling it right now in the Purium store. It's a handwritten note. So that's my little thing. Go to moo.com, order some beautiful note cards, um, put your, your logo on it or your name on it and write cards to your team. They will keep them forever, huge. However, just connecting with somebody on a Facebook Messenger will make their day. And I'm gonna show you that in a second, okay? And that's where we're gonna start with today is making people's day. All right, let me just jump over real quick. Back to my Prezo, I have one more slide and then we'll jump in. Basically, this is the deal, guys. You, I know you like the philosophy. How many of you guys like the philosophy? Yeah, you're like, that's my philosophy, great. This is what you need though, you gotta have a system. Having a philosophy is great, but you need to have a system to follow, a way to stay in contact with all your relationships, all of them. Man, does everybody that you know need what you have? And do they know of 100 more people who need what you have? Yes, everybody, you need to be in contact with all your relationships, know when to contact them. In other words, don't make me think, don't make me plan, just tell me who's up, okay? Know what to say. How many of you guys get stuck trying to figure out the perfect message and end up not sending any? Yeah, just know what to say. I'm gonna teach you tonight how to get the conversation started and make sure nobody falls through the cracks. Yeah, I'm gonna say that one again. Make sure nobody falls through the cracks. This is huge. I would say 95% of the interested people in this business are dropped through the cracks. And you may feel convicted by the end of this training that you may be doing that too. But again, I'm going to give you the solution. All right, so let's jump out of this real quick. We're going to Teamsy. I'm going to show you guys the Purium specific custom tailored version of Teamsy. How cool is that? Pretty cool, right? Here we go. You see it? Are you guys seeing Teamsy now? Okay, great. This is the Teamsy dashboard. Let me show it to you really quick and then we'll do setup. Okay, when you come into Teamsy, you're gonna have daily goals. I'm gonna show you how to set it up in a second, but here's the goals for today. We haven't set any yet, so they say zero, but you'll have a goal for connecting with prospects, customers, and brand partners, inviting people to the business, and adding new people to your list. Those are gonna be where you focus your daily activities in your power hour, make sense? Okay, great. And then um, your power hour is where we do our work, and this Teamsy will tell you who's up next on your list, that's it. Your goal is to connect with 10 prospects. Next person on my list is Stephanie, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Make sense? And then you'll connect with your customers, and you'll connect with your brand partners, and then you'll do your follow-ups. It's super simple. It's so easy that I've had people tell me, Eric, it's just not sophisticated enough. Um, but I will tell you that we have, I've had brand new people, 
jump into Teamsy and rank up quickly. And I've had people who are at the very top of the food chain with, uh, you know, I think the, the biggest team I've worked with so far is 90,000 distributors come into Teamsy and say, this is what I needed from the get-go, something easy, something simple, and something that will help me manage what we're doing. So I'm gonna show you this, but let me set this up. First of all, for those of you guys who aren't already using Teamsy, I want you to know you can get a free trial for 30 days, free. No credit card required, nothing weird. It doesn't auto renew. It's just free for 30 days. You can go use it for 30 days and get to get a feel for it, okay? So I want you to do that. Go to teamsy.com and get your free trial. When it says select your business, make sure you select Purium so you get in the right version, okay? And then after you fall in love with Teamsy, you can decide to continue or not, okay? Great, so get your free trial. When you launch into your free trial, it'll drop you into the setup wizard, which helps you set it up. We're gonna launch it right now together so that we can um, set it up, I'll show you. You can always launch it from this little wheel on the top right. Okay, so what we're gonna do in setup wizard are three things. We're gonna set an income goal, which is kind of cool. Once you set the income goal, Teamsy does all the work for you and tells you what to do. We'll help you create a powerful why so that you don't quit. One out of two people quit in their first year. I don't want that to be you. And then we'll get all your contacts into Teamsy so that you can have everything in one place and be super mega organized. God forbid you're chasing around pads of paper, um, spreadsheets you haven't updated in six weeks, shoe boxes full of sticky notes. I know what you guys do. Or you don't have anything. You're just looking through your phone contacts, your Facebook list. We're going to get you organized so that's not an issue anymore. I know I hit you all. I hit everybody with one of those bullseyes. All right, let's go. Set an income goal. So you just have an empty box here. This is the income level you want to be at 12 months from now. Make sense? So put a number in there. Look, this is what I'm going to put in. $150,000. Okay? That's the income level I want to be at. So my monthly income level would be whatever that is divided by 12, okay? 12 months from now. What's your number? Put something in there. Uh, I think you should be aggressive, but realistic, right? So somebody once, I had somebody once say, um, Eric, I can't get it done in an hour a day. I said, well, what's your goal? She said, $500,000. I said, okay. I said, is that realistic? She goes, yeah, I'm at, four, I'm at 420 now. So this was a top leader. I said, well, that's fantastic. Good for you. Congratulations. In that situation, I would just set your goal for 80 because you're just trying to create that new income. She's like, oh, that's so easy. Now I get it done in 15 minutes. I go, exactly. You guys ready? You guys with me? Okay. So I put it in for 150. I'm going to hit continue. Now Teamsy has done the math and it's telling me that I need to connect with 4,348 people over the next 12 months to hit my goal. Okay. How many of you guys think that's a lot of people? Okay, one honest person. The rest are just thinking, I don't even know what he's talking about. This is my fifth call in a row. I'm going to watch the recording. No, just kidding. 4,348 is a lot of people, but is 150 in, one in your first year aggressive? Totally, totally aggressive. Typically, that's, you know, somebody that's cranking for three years, right? Now, do I think you could do this in one year with Teamsy if you're, if you're consistent and motivated? Absolutely, I do. That's what this tool is there to do is help you be consistent. So let's go to the next page. The next page breaks it down for me into bite-sized chunks. So I take that big number. First, I divide it into my three groups, prospects, customers, brand partners. Okay. And then I break it down monthly, weekly, and then daily. Now I have a daily goal. Connect with, and look at these goals, guys. Team has already given me a suggestion. Connect with nine prospects every day, six customers every day, and four brand partners on my team every day, 19 people. I'm going to show you that that is literally 15, 20 minutes of work in Teams. Okay. So maybe not your first week. By your second week, you'll have the workflows down. You'll go super fast. If you're brand new and you've got no brand partners yet, then make this a zero. You can just edit these and add that number over here to your prospect list. Okay. Same thing if you've got no customers yet. Put it all on your prospect list to start. If you've already got a team going, then, then leave the numbers distributed as we had them. Make sense? Okay, I'm gonna move that one to 10 though so that it's an even 20. How many of you guys are anal like me and 19 is not gonna fly, but 20 makes sense? That's me, so I'll just make it 20. Okay, so just real quick, these are connect with prospects, connect with customers, connect with brand partners. 
What do I mean by connect? I mean, just literally say hello. The goal is to make their day. Call it the make someone stay mindset. It's actually our hashtag around Team Z. It's hashtag make someone stay mindset. I'm not trying to recruit them. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm not trying to vomit my business on them. I just want to connect and say, hey, how are you? You know, and get them to smile and make their day. That's my first goal. Now, what I'm hoping will happen is that they'll respond and I can have a conversation with them. And I'll go get a little deeper with that in a little while. As I'm having conversations with people, I will uncover people who are interested in learning more. And I will, those people I'll invite to learn more. And that's what these daily invites are. So my goal is three. I want to invite three people to learn about the business or the products every day. And I'm going to do that from the 20 conversations I'm starting. Make sense? And then ads, these are just new people I'm putting on my list. Maybe the people I already know that aren't there yet. Maybe they're people I'm meeting, social media or in the real world. Adding new people every day is a discipline that you need to get in the habit of doing. Make sense? Okay. And then what happens after a while, you, the momentum happens, the ads become super easy, right? I mean, I can't tell you the last time I didn't get 15 friend requests in a day. So it gets easy after a while, people come to you, which is great. All right, let's keep going, continue. So once you have these goals the way you want them, right? Teams you will suggest, you put them, you fine tune them, click continue and it sets them up on the dashboard with your goals. Make sense? The next section is, my, is finding your why. We built this in here because it's something I feel really strongly about. One out of two people, as I mentioned before, will quit the business in their first year. And I just want you guys to know, sometimes it's easy to look at people and go, uh, you know, people, th that person's a quitter, but I'm not. You guys just need to understand that we're all quitters. <sighs> it doesn't feel good to say that, but it's true. And if you think about our lives, typically we, if things get hard, we quit. Now there are exceptions. There are plenty of exceptions where you've stood your ground and where you've persevered and been successful. And in every single one of those, if you look at them, you had a why you had a reason. And if you start this business without one, which I did, I'll, I'll share my story. Do I have time? Let me just do it real quick. I'll share my story real quick on my why I'll, I'll take you through the process that I went through just so you can kind of understand. When I started this business, I didn't have a deep reason to do it. And I wouldn't have made it very far if I didn't go deeper. Does that make sense? And you bring people on for the same reason. You guys know, you bring people on as brand partners and it's tenuous at best. They want a discount or they're okay, or I can make a buck here. It's not, they don't have their deep whys yet. And those people are not gonna make it until they do. Now, let me take you through this process. You don't need to, seriously, you don't need to read 20 books to do this. You don't need to go to Sonoma, not Sonoma, what is it, Sedona, and get in a sweat lodge to figure this out. Sonoma's more my speed. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so here we go. I'm going to take you through the process. There's five questions. They're basically just thought-provoking questions to get you thinking about this, and then we'll create a why statement. Okay, so here we go. First question is, why did you become a brand partner? Now, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take you through my story just so you get an example. Your story obviously is different. In my case, um, people were asking me what I was doing. I lost a bunch of weight. I lost 60 pounds in 90 days. Um, and I, and I was, it wasn't like one of those things where I starved. I was working out like a fiend, you know, building, getting, getting fit. People were like, what are you doing all day long? What did you do? Oh my gosh, what have you done? What have you done? And so I was telling people all day long. If I could go back in time and capture all those people, my business would have gone, you know, much faster. My wife was like, why aren't you getting paid for this? You're like their number one commercial. So I signed up. Makes sense? Because my wife told me to. Smart husband. Number two, what did you hope to accomplish? What do you hope to accomplish? In my case, I wanted to make $500 extra money each month. Can any, anybody relate to that one? I just wanted, I was just like, dude, 500, could I make 500 bucks a month? That'd be great. Yeah, great. Then I'll do it. And I remember, I remember my sponsor asking him if I could do that. He said, totally, I think you can do it. And I said, no, I mean in, in one hour a day. He goes, yeah, totally. So great. Sign me up. So that's all. I, that was my lofty goal, 500 bucks a month. Next question. Why is that important to you? So if somebody tells you they want to make some extra money, find out why. You need to know because there's an emotional reason. Guys, there's an emotional reason underneath. The emotional reasons are the ones that matter. Make sense? 
I wanted to save it. I wanted to put $500 a month in the bank. That's what I wanted to do. That's what my real goal was. Next question. Now, you, by the way, you should ask me why, right? Because here's the thing. People go, oh, that's a nice goal. You want to save money, great. But you need to understand the situation that I had gone through um, as a business coach, primarily working with real estate folks, by the way, for years, which was a smart move because wasn't real estate like this every year? <laughs> oh my gosh, it was like every year. We grew 30, our business 30% a year for 10 straight years. And then what happens at the end of 2008? The Great Recession. Did anyone get hit by that like a truck? Yeah. So that business disappeared. I lost my job along with half the country. And that was a scary time for sure. My, my wife's a stay-at-home mom. We've got four kids. We had three then. Now we have four. Um, and, you know, it, it was scary. I, we made it. We made it through. God's, by God's good grace, we made it through. But we lost our savings pretty quick. And we stopped saving. We, went pay, we started going paycheck to paycheck like everybody else, and we were stuck there for a long time. When I came into this business opportunity, I had been on a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle for six years and had not saved a penny. And as somebody who actually teaches other people how to budget and plan their financial freedom, I knew that without the paycheck, I was 60 days from losing everything. It was a terrifying position. Not everybody, not everybody actually thinks about what would happen when they're paycheck to paycheck, but I knew exactly what would happen. So putting that $500 a month in the bank was actually a hedge against a terrifying emotion. Does that make sense? Next question, what would achieving this mean for you and your family? I don't know if you can see that. Let me scroll it up. What would achieving this mean for you and your family? Again, it's just to get you thinking about this. Now, my first thought on this was if I could save money long enough, we would buy it. I would buy a new house for my family. That's what I wanted was to buy a new home. We were in this small home. We had all these dogs and people everywhere. There was nowhere to go. Anybody relate to that? I mean, there was somebody everywhere. You seriously could not get up to go to the restroom in the middle of the night without turning on a light. <laughs> Trip over somebody or something. I, I dreamt about getting a new home. During the, the recession, we were upside down on our mortgage, $200,000 plus dollars. And there was no possibility of moving. So I thought, man, if we could move into a new home, it'd be great. I wanted all my kids to be able to have their own room. I wanted my own room with my wife because <laughs> we were sharing with the baby. And I wanted a, an office so I could come home and work from home and build my business. So that was my dream. Next question. Do you guys see how in four questions I went from, okay, sign me up to, wow, I'm starting to dream. I'm starting to think about what I can do with my business. The last question here is, why is that meaningful? Why is that meaningful and how does this make you feel? Just for the record, I know I wrote this question into Teamsy for you guys, but I hated answering this question. They're so, it's so uncomfortable, isn't it, doing that kind of question? When I thought about it though, here's what I realized. First off, I wasn't sure if buying a home was a meaningful goal. But usually, usually our goals are kind of like a cover for something that we don't want to face or think about. And here's what I realized. The home was symbolic of something else. It wasn't that I needed a new home. It was that the, it was that the home represented my family and I needed a different reality with my family. I wasn't around them. I wasn't present. My kids were growing up and I was completely missing it. I would come home. I would get up in the morning to go to work. My kids would still be in their PJs, kiss them goodbye, and I'd go to work, and I would work. And I, would, and I did exactly what I thought I needed to do, which was work hard and provide for my family. That's the way I was raised. I would get home in the evening, and uh, my kids had already had supper without me. It wasn't like the, the, the you know, leave it to Beaver where the family gets to have dinner together. They did without me. And then I would kiss them goodnight, put them to bed. That was my relationship. My, my son at the time who was in, in kindergarten was constantly forgetting my name. And I mean, it's not like he knew, he, he, daddy, he was forgetting daddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was, it was heartbreaking because I realized I was going to miss their entire childhood. They were going to be taken care of, but I might as well be, you know, off somewhere. And um, going through this process made me realize that it was, there were some things going on that I wasn't allowing myself to face or process that were really driving me, right? This fear, this money fear, 
having lost my job and having to scramble, this, that fear was huge and not being around my kids was huge. And here's what I realized. I loved my, I loved my career and I had a lot of status. By the way, the number one motivator for people for being productive is not income, it's status. Why do you guys think Purim gives you all those beautiful ribbons and titles and stuff? They know. Status, number one. Number two is personal connection to another person or, 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 or your team. And I loved my company and I loved the status of my job. But here's what I realized. I was at the top of my career. There was nowhere else to go. And, and I couldn't save $2. So even though I loved this career, it was a dead end for us. We were stuck. And now I'm looking over at this thing that it was just ten, five minutes ago was extra money. And I'm looking at that going, wow, sky's the limit with network marketing, isn't it? There's no limit to what I could achieve here. And it was clear, this is the vehicle to build my life with my family. This is the vehicle to build my financial freedom. And the, what switched in my mind going through this process was that the extra money was my career. My career salary job, that was my extra money now. And these guys were going to pay me six figures while I figured out my network marketing business. How many of you guys have a job outside of your business? Anyone? Well, if you do, those of you guys listening and watching this, that's your extra money. Your network marketing business is your business. Make sense? And so I wrote my first why statement. My very first one, I just want you guys to know this wasn't 10 years ago. This was three years ago last month. I got a memory came up on Facebook and I thought, Oh my gosh, that was just three years ago. I can't believe how much my life has changed in three years. I want you guys to be saying the same thing to me a couple years from now. Okay, so let me just share this with you and then we'll go in and do our power hour. I get caught up in this stuff. It's fun. Okay, where am I? Teamsy, where'd you go? So the sample text is actually my why statement that I wrote. And this was it. My why. To create a life where I never have to worry about money again. I enjoy quality time with my family and I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. Writing that down changed everything for me. It made crystal clear what I was working towards. It wasn't $500 extra money in the bank. It was worry, financial freedom. No more worry or fear. Being with my kids and my wife every day. Wow. Now, with a tool like Teamsy where I can get all of the work done in less than 30, 40 minutes, do you know how hard it is to be confronted by a why like this and say, nope, I'm not going to do that 30 minutes today. <laughs> it's hard because this confronts you. You have to choose. Is this 30 minutes of doing nothing more important and staying stuck in the life where I'm stuck now? Or do I suck it up and get my work done for 30 minutes, which is actually quite fun and work towards my why? Well, I want you guys to know I chose the why more often than the other and everything changed. Now, within 90 days of writing this down, I left my job. I came home. I had nowhere to work from home, so I went, do you guys know the story about my shed? Stephanie, do you know the story about my shed? I came home, I had nowhere to work, and I had no money yet. <laughs> so I went to Home Depot and I bought one of those sheds. You know the ones you put your lawnmower in in the backyard? I got one of those, I had it dropped in my backyard on the dirt, right? I, there used to be grass in our backyard, but we had a drought that summer. So we weren't allowed to water our lawns in California. So I put it in the dirt. I ran an extension cord out there. I put my Mac out there and a homemade desk and I started working in the shed. Let me show you guys this picture. My kids called it the shed quarters or daddy shoffice. I think I have this picture up on my, yeah, here it is. Here I'm with one of my business partners, Mike. In my shoffice, check that out guys. There it is in all its glory. I had my computer in there. And I started building my business. I had a homemade whiteboard back there that I got for 10 bucks at Home Depot, screwed it right into the walls. And you can see I was working on an idea that day that we took the picture, an idea for something called Teensy. So you just got to make it happen. The why will drive you to do it. In fact, when we sold that house, um, my, my partners were like, are you going to take the shed? I kind of wish I had because we joked about someday that shed being like in the lobby of some beautiful building like you walk into the shed, but we left the shed. It's okay. We got some pictures. My point is the why will convict you and it will drive you. Does that make sense? So don't skip that step. Turn our light. My son, the sun has set. It's getting dark here now. Okay, real quick. I was going to skip that to save time, but 
Um, was that helpful for you guys? And you can take your team through this little step, just ask them these questions and help them pull theirs out. Now the why will change over time, it'll get deeper and that's fine, but you need to get something out to convict you. And also it's great to share with your loved ones so they can hold you accountable to it. Like, hey, are you gonna go do your team team today? I did it yesterday, it's like, oh, you wanna stay stuck? <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Where am I? Let's get back into Teams. Let's finish setting this thing up. There's one more step for setup. One more step for setup, and that's getting your contacts in. Again, if you've already got a team, you've been building the business, your first step is to get your team imported. Okay? If your team is two people, you can put them in one at a time. It's super easy. I'll show you that in a second. But if you've got a big team, you want to import them in at bulk. Um, same thing with your customers. Next group you're going to get are your customers. There's some videos here to help you. There's some FAQs on our help center. We, we have a team, we'll even walk you through it, hold your hand through it if you need it. Once you get your team and your customers in, you're gonna to wanna to get your Facebook friends list in. This is so cool because you won't be going through your Facebook messenger trying to think about who to message. It'll all be organized for you. Okay, so get your Facebook friends list. And then anywhere else you have contacts, you can bring those in too, but those are the big ones, okay? And there's some videos here to help you with that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna skip this real quick. If, you're, if you don't have bulk lists and you wanna put people in one at a time, you just click this little purple circle guy right here and you add them in. Super easy, okay? Okay, now, um, oh, there's one more thing I gotta show you. So when you, whenever you wanna do an import, you don't have to go to the setup wizard, you just come here to the team page. Team is where your, is like your CRM where your whole list lives, see everybody's there on the team page. I clicked over here on the left to get there. See the big import button? That's how you import a list, okay? All right, so when you've imported a list, Teamsy will automatically bring you back to the team page to do to rank that list, okay? Um, let me show you what that looks like. I, you can do it anytime too by coming to this page and clicking on this little menu and hitting rank mode. Teamsy will bring you back here to rank the list, a five-star scale, just like you're ranking something on Amazon, Yelp, right, Netflix, you guys know how to do this, right? Five stars is awesome, one star is not. And listen, a lot of people skip this. It's very important to do this. You rank your relationships so you can prioritize your time. Make sense? If you don't do that, you'll spend more time with the turkeys and not with the best people. You should spend more time with the best people. Now, what I want you to know is, once you've ranked your list, Teamsy will automatically create your up next list every day. You never have to plan your power hour ever. It's just done for you automatically. Just turn it on and you connect with whoever it tells you to. And it will keep cycling your list in an organized, systemized way. You'll never drop anybody. So let me explain what this means. The higher the star rank, the more often you talk to somebody. Okay? The lower the star rank, the less often. Now most people, everyone's going to default to three stars when they come in. You just need to move them up or down or leave them at three. This is what they mean. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or a brand partner, or they're an existing customer or brand partner that's a rock star, or they just might be your favorite people. Five star people come up every 30 days, every 30 days. Now this isn't a follow up, this is a connect. Make sense? Checking in, how are you? Hey, it's been a while, what are you up to? Okay, four star is someone likely to become a brand partner or customer with a little bit of nurturing. Okay, or those people on your team, your customers that are solid, solid performers, consistent people. They'll show up every 60 days to connect, every 60 days, okay? Three stars could go either way. That's why everyone defaults to three to start. They could go either way. They show up every 90 days. Two star people, they're colder. They show up every 120 days. Do you guys see how this works? This helps you stay in touch with everybody, but it keeps your focus more often on the best people, the best relationships, the people who already trust you the most are the people you should connect with the most. Make sense? Now with, with network hey, marketing. Uh, real quick, um, can you look in the chat because people have questions there. We can do it later. Well, I'm gonna do a Q&A at the end. Okay. Um, unless there's something really pressing. Nope, we'll do it then. Okay. Yeah, well, let's just do it in the Q&A. So um, this is important because it helps you cycle through your whole list. Now what happens in this industry is a lot of times because we're afraid we're gonna mess up our friendships and we're afraid to talk to them because, because <laughs> of the traditional approach, we end up spending all our time with like the twos, 
and wonder why we're not getting great results. I'm here to tell you guys, as you're investing and loving on people, you're going to want to talk to the people you like the best and you're going to get the best results. So you do this once and you never have to worry about it again. Once you're done, you don't have to save or anything. It auto saves. When you're ready, you can go back to the dashboard and crush your power hour. So you guys ready? Let me show you how to do a power hour. You get up in the morning, you turn on, you log into Teamsy and it's here. You've got your goals. The goals that we set today were 10 prospects, six customers, four brand partners. Okay, great. So first I'm gonna work my power hour on the left side of my list, the right side is where I log the work. First person on my list is Stephanie. I'm gonna connect with her. Remember, connect is just to make her day. Now, if you get stuck, how many of you guys said you get stuck trying to think of the message? Great, I put in the messages that I have refined. I've refined these over the years by myself and with the 70,000 people using Teams to get them just so simple and work, so they work. Go right here to scripts. See where my thing is hovering? Do you guys see that? Click on that. I'm gonna get a Facebook script because I'm gonna message her on Facebook. And I'm just gonna grab one. Look, connect number one. Hi Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. Simple, so simple. If you've never messaged people, they may say, have you been hacked? <laughs> and you say, no, ha ha, LOL, no, it's me. Just thought I'd say hi, right? Great, so look, I'm gonna use this one, so I'll just hit copy script. That puts it on my clipboard. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste it right here in Teamsy so that I can edit it a little bit. Obviously, I gotta change the name. Great, I wanna put maybe an emoticon in there. You guys emoticon freaks like me? Yeah, put a smiley face. Great. Just personalize it a little bit. So now what I'll do is I do it in Teamsy. I used to just do it right in Facebook, but I have sent it with the wrong name before because I'm super rapid. So it was actually on one of these calls. I said, why don't you do it in Teamsy first? That way you won't send it. Said, That's a great idea. So now it's ready to go. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to send it in Facebook. You, you have to go to Facebook to send it because Facebook, you know, they rule the world and they don't want anyone playing in their sandbox. It's fine. There she is. So watch this. I'm just going to send her this message. Super easy. Ready to go. Don't overthink it. Don't sit here and stare at it. You don't need to go read her whole Facebook page. Just send it. Okay? Just telling you. If she responds to me, then I'll read her Facebook page. She might not even respond to me. And I spent 15 minutes reading her Facebook page. And now I'm going to start wondering why she didn't respond to me. What a waste of time. I, I'll give her two seconds. I'll send the message. If she responds, I'll engage deeper. Make sense? Okay, now look, go back to Teamsy. We'll finish logging it. That was a Facebook message. I clicked the big blue log connect button to log it in Teamsy. So Teamsy told me who to connect with, what to say. I sent it. I logged it. Done. You can see I've got one on the scoreboard now. Next up is Jay. I'm just going to use that same script for efficiency's sake and change the name. How easy is that, you guys? Now watch, we'll jump over to Facebook. I'll send it to Jay. There she is. Hey, that's a picture of me on Jay's page. <laughs> Isn't that me? Yeah, that sure looks like me. She works for Teamsy, it's, she's a ringer, it's all good. Okay, so we sent the message to Jay. Logged, big blue log connect button, boom. Done, two done. Do you guys see how easy this is? Next is Kathy. Now, a couple things. People will start responding. Don't answer them yet. Stay focused on your outgoing messages until you get them all done. And then you can have the conversations. And it's gonna be hard because you're gonna be so excited, <laughs> right? But just keep sending them. So the goal, my goal in this example is 10. I'm gonna go down my list until I've sent messages to 10 people on my prospects list. I'm just gonna go well, I, and I'll probably just use that same script for the first 30, 40 days as I'm going through my list. Until I get to them up again, second time, I won't change the script. Does that make sense? Just send it, send it, send it, send it, send it. And then I'll toggle over, when I'm done, I'll toggle over to my customers. For me, tip, my typical response rate is about 50%. So if I'm sending 20 messages, I'm actually having 10 conversations started a day. Think about that momentum right there, guys. Just think about that. How many of you guys will be excited to complain about that a week from now? Yeah, and you will. 
you'll complain, you'll say, Eric, I'm overwhelmed by all these messages, now how do I handle it? Which will be a new sophisticated problem I'll help you through when you get there, okay? Next are customers, I'm gonna connect with my customers. First one on here is Luis. I'll do the same thing, I'll go to scripts for some help. You'll find you have customer specific scripts. You're doing so great, I'm proud of you, congratulations on. How are you, hi John, how are you enjoying the whatever products? Today's hot product is CBD oil, right? <laughs> Hi, John. How are you enjoying the CBD oil? Send me an update. Let me know how you can be help, right? So look, you just copy the script the same way. You know, you put it in here. You edit it how you want to do it. You put his name in. The same exact way, you guys. Right? And then don't leave the products. Change it to... Send me an update. Let me know how you can be help. How easy is this, you guys? Now, really quick. I, don't I know I've gone a little bit over time. You gotta be in touch with your customers. It is as important as prospects, okay? Three reasons, really quick. Number one, it's the right thing to do. And usually if, that's, if it's the right thing to do, you should be doing it. <laughs> Number two, if you're in touch regularly with customers, they will order more product. This is, this is a fact. If you're in touch with customers regularly, they will order more and they will stay on their recurring orders longer, they'll retain longer, okay? If you want to increase the team volume, you get everybody doing a 30-day free challenge on Team Z, staying in touch with their customers, watch the volume go up. I've seen larger teams increase, increase volume 40% in one month on a challenge. Isn't that crazy? Just by being in touch, it's not because, not because we have magic scripts. It's just by saying, hey, how are you? I've been thinking about you. What are you up to? Okay, great. So look, number three, number three reason why you got to be in touch with your customers. How many of you guys want new ones? Anyone want new customers? Where do you go for new customers? Do you guys know the best place to go for new customers? Is it Instagram? Is it Snapchat? It's your current customers. The best source for a new customer is a current customer. Raise your hand if you've got one customer who loves the products, just one. I mean, you can have 10 or 100, I don't care, but if you have one, you're all set. Because one person who loves a product talks about it. They share. 86% of all purchases are made by personal recommendation. Isn't that crazy? Billions of dollars are spent on marketing, but it's the personal recommendation that seals the deal. Your people are talking to other people about the products. Those people are ready to buy right now. You just don't know them. So you gotta be in touch with your customers and you need to be getting introduced. Find out who you're talking, who have you told about this? Who needs more information? Introduce them to me so I can get them that information. By the way, another whole training here, but when people start introducing you to, the, to their friends, that's when you need to sign them on as a brand partner. <laughs> okay, so connect to your customers. The goal is six, go down the list until you get to six, and then you can move to brand partners. These are your team, you're gonna connect. Is there anything to do to make your day? Wanted to let you know I was proud of you. How are you? Quick messages, okay? It's called Teamsy because building your team as a family is the most important thing you can do. We could have called it Leadsy or Salesy or anything lame like that, but we wanted the focus to be on building your team. And having a Facebook group for your team is great. Having Zoom calls is great. It does not replace hearing from you one on one. And so few leaders in this industry do it. My friend Debbie, who is a um, RFX Circle Award winner in, in Redan and Fields, that's their top, top thing. Steph, you know you know about that. That's their top thing. And she she built the business the way they taught her, which is just cold inviting a thousand people every day and building a business. She got to the top of her industry and she looked back and said, I don't have a leg to stand on. If I don't continue doing this forever, it will fall apart like a house of cards. She came to me and said, how do I build relationships? Because I know that if the business is built on relationships, it's rock solid. And it, that's the thing that's so cool is the relationships, guys, that you invest in, they start generating new business for you. When I talk to you about creating an army of advocates, that is what will happen. People will be bringing people to you. I had one, one friend, Shasha, who brought in my business. She brought 11 people to me in one calendar year. She wasn't interested in being a distributor herself. She brought them to me with basically their credit cards out. This is my friend. She wants this. Here's her card number. It's like, nice to meet you. She had already, she was so into what we were doing. She was my advocate. Does that make sense? And that's where you guys will get to too. Okay, next. So prospects, customers, brand partners. This was 20 people, 20 messages. Use the scripts. You're done in 20 minutes. Do you guys see how easy that is? And it's already logged and tracked as you go. 
Now what happens is they start responding <laughs> and you're having conversations. Now what I recommend you do is you block another hour or half hour, a couple half hours in your day where you actually are dedicated to responding to messages so that you're not slaving to your phone all day. If you're new and you really need to make sales, you'll start slaving to your phone all day and that's how I started, that's okay. Till my wife said, stop that. <laughs> As you're having conversations, you're just, your first goal is to make their day. As you're talking to them, guys, you're, now your goal is to listen and find out how you can help them. Okay, how can I help this person? Not listen for the opportunity to, to throw your business up on them. I do, uh, you will talk about your business every time and I'll give you guys a couple tips on that real quick. But your goal is to help them and it may be with your business or your products and it may not. Okay, just find a way to help them. That's how you invest in that relationship. That's how you serve people. By the way, we find our highest value in helping others. Did you know that? We're taught that people are self-interested and our economy runs on self-interest, but that is not true. People find their highest value in helping others and you guys will find how, much, how enjoyable this business becomes when you start focusing this way. So think about what you know and who you know that will help this person and help them in any way you can. And as you're having conversations with people, people will be in, some people will be interested in learning more right now and those are the ones you invite to learn about the business. Okay? And so how do I do that? Let's just say, for example, I'm talking to Stephanie. We're catching up. What have you been up to? Oh my gosh, I haven't talked to you since high school. Totally, you know, we're catching up. Um, on each other's life and I'm asking her questions and I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. And, and so, she, you know, what is, what's going on with you, Eric? By the way, I don't care if she doesn't ask me, if she asks me what's going on with me or if she doesn't, I'm going to tell her. Because I, she just told me, every, gave me her update and I'm just going to tell her. Oh, well, you know, um, I've been doing this Purim thing and it's been amazing. And the best part about my life now is not only do I get to be home with my kids full time, but I get to build an income based on helping other people achieve optimum health. And I, and I have to tell you that that has been so incredibly uh, rewarding for me. Now, am I selling her? Am I recruiting her? No. If I wasn't doing Purim, what would I tell her? Oh, well, you know. I haven't talked to you since high school, but I'm a veterinarian now. I help animals or I'm a school teacher. I love working with kids. Wouldn't you tell somebody what you're doing? Yeah. So why don't you, you need to share what you're doing and why you're passionate about it, what you're doing and why you're passionate about it. Good friend of mine, Ron, um, who's in one of my boot camps, He's like, Eric, I'm reaching out to people, but I'm just not getting the invites. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I said, well, are you, are you explaining to them what you're doing and why? And he goes, no, I'm just connecting and making a day. I'm not talking about my business. I said, this guy had, was, had stage five cancer, you guys. He's the only person I know that had stage five cancer that's still here. He, the doctors gave up on him and he cured himself with nutrition. Guess why he's passionate about what he does? How many of you guys can relate to that story? I told him, you need to tell people. I don't know if you, if you know that I was really sick. I actually, it was, I was actually had terminal cancer, but you know, by God's good grace, I'm healthy now. And it's because of the nutrition that I'm doing. And now I'm passionate about sharing it with other people. I said, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to sell you, but everyone needs to know that's my mission. I want everyone to know my mission. What is your mission? Do you guys know what your mission is? What your passion is? Think about that because you need to be sharing that. And don't worry about sharing it. You're not saying, hey, do you, are you interested in buying any of this stuff now? Let me send you my link. Oh, watch this video. Tell me your opinion. Barf. That's what our industry teaches us to do. Just share your passion and why you're excited about it. Get them on board your mission. Now, here's the thing. I'm talking to Stephanie. She's like, oh my gosh, Eric, that's amazing. That's so great. I'm so excited for you. You know? And people will say that even if they have no interest whatsoever in Purim. They'll be excited for you. That's where you want them. And say, well, you know, Stephanie, if you've ever, if you ever want to learn more about it, um, you know, or you have a friend or family member who, who, you know, needs, needs help with this, I would be honored to help them. And she said, oh my gosh, it is really interesting and intriguing what you're doing. Well, listen, you know, if you'd like to learn more about it, we're, my, my company is doing a, my team's doing a, a virtual event on Facebook live tomorrow night. If you want to jump in, I'll send you the link. You can learn about it from home in your bed, whatever, and get some information. She's, okay. That sounds great. Good. So now I'm going to invite her to come to this event, right? So let me just show you how I do this. First off, she's not on the dashboard anymore, so I'm gonna look her up. 
And that brings me to her full contact record. I'm going to click the connect button to open up that connect box because now I'm on the team page on a contact record. So see where it says invite right here? I'm going to click this because I'm not going to do a connect now. I'm going to actually make this an invite. So I'm going to change this to, let's call it a Facebook live stream. Look at that. Great. So now I've, now I've logged, I'm logging this as an invite. By the way, Teams is automatically setting a follow-up for me. This is going to put her on my follow-ups list now. Okay. So let's say I send her via Facebook messenger. Okay. And I just put a live stream link. Okay. You with me? So now I'm logging that I invited her to that. It's logged on her record and see it set the follow-up. So now check this out. She's no longer going to be on my prospects list. Now she's over my follow-ups list. So here's my power hour. Connect with prospects, connect with customers, connect with brand partners. And then I work my follow-ups list. So all week as you're having conversations, you're adding people to the, that you've invited to your follow-ups list, right? So my goal was three out of 20, get on this list. And these are my hot prospects, people who are interested in learning more that I'm gonna be following up with. So now I've sent her to this event, she's learned about the business, and now I'm gonna follow up like a pro. So when she shows up on a follow-ups list, guess what I do? The same thing I would do on a connect, I go to my scripts, this time what I do is I grab a follow-up. Here's follow-up number one. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay, great. So I'm just gonna now send her that follow-up. Right, ready to go? See how easy this is? Look her up. Now I've sent the follow-up to her. Boom, I send it. Now, what'll happen is as I log this in Teamsy, I'm gonna set a new follow-up. Let's say I follow up again in two days, right? I'll set the new follow-up, log it. So now she'll be on my list again, due, due in two days. Okay, I don't think about it anymore. I go down my list and when I'm done with my power, I'm done with my power hour. Tomorrow I come in and I work my, my lists, go do my follow-ups list. Whoever's due today, I'll follow up. When I come back on Friday, there she is, top of my follow-ups list, I'll send another follow-up. And I'll just go in here and I'll get follow-up number two. Okay, and I'll send her that message. Super simple, seamless, nobody can fall through the cracks. Now really quick, you guys are hanging with me. How many of you guys are actually asleep? Um, do you want me to give you a little more on following up? You guys are good, you're drinking your premium, okay. Because I wanna teach you a little bit about the follow-up. The fortunes in the follow-up, you know this. Did you guys know that 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and the 10th follow-up? Have you guys heard that? 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and the 10th follow-up. 90% of all people in this business follow up three times. Right, which means like more than 90% of all the leads are wasted. Or they're picked up later by somebody else. How many of you so, guys? So real quick here, on, on that, do you just keep following up every two days? Or like for me, I saw the video and then I just tell you where I'm at. Is that what usually happens eventually? Well, okay, so let me talk. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna answer that right now. Most people won't follow up 10 times. How many of you guys, does anyone follow up 10 times? Let's just be honest, anybody? Very rarely do I have somebody who hasn't already been through one of my classes raise their hand. Sometimes I'll have like, you know, the, the teacher's pet in the corner going, I do, because <laughs> they've been trained by me. Here's the thing, and I know what, there's two reasons why people don't do it. The first is you don't have teams yet. So there's just, you can't stay on top of somebody that long. You lose them. You lose track of them. The most important reason is you are afraid of being annoying. True? You're afraid of being annoying. And I am not going to tell you, get over yourself and do it anyways. That is not what I'm going to tell you. Because the ch chances are the way you're doing it, the way you've been taught to do it is annoying. So first I want to teach you how to do it without, without being annoying. Does that make sense? But, but I want you to have a mindset shift about following up. Following up, guys, this is an important principle. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. Put that on your sticky note. There's a good use for a sticky note. Put that on your screen. Following up is an act of love. Why? How many of you guys truly believe you can change somebody's life with this business and with these products? So if they never buy, how much change can you do? 
zero. I mean, you can encourage them or whatever, but they have to buy first. And I'm telling you guys that 80% of them will not buy unless you follow it up 10 times, which means the only thing you have in your business, all the training you have, all the products, all of the amazing things, you guys just had a corporate call learning about products. It's irrelevant. If you can't follow up enough to get them to buy, you can't help them. The follow-up is your tool. That is how you help people and actively love them. Following up is an act of love. Not If you love people and want to impact their life, you have to follow up. If you don't follow up with people, you are communicating to them, I don't care enough about you, sorry. And I know that sounds harsh, but think about it. Think about somebody who failed to follow up with you and you felt that way. I guess they don't care. Now, here's the good news. You can do it without being annoying, and people will thank you for it. They will say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for following up with me. You're amazing. This will happen. Now, you have to follow my two principles. By the way, I want you guys to know, coming in now with your custom Purium version two years in, it's been so refined and, and made so easy. I put my 10 follow-up scripts in Teamsy for you. They're numbered in order. You honestly don't have to think. Your team, you can duplicate this, your team go, look, you don't even have to understand this. Just go in order, just send those follow-up scripts. But here are the principles. Number one, never ask someone to do something in your follow-up. Never ask them to do anything. Don't ask them to call you back. That's the worst one. Don't ask them to message you back, respond. Don't ask them to RSVP. Don't ask them to complete their purchase. Don't ask them to do, don't give them any homework in their, assume they won't follow, they won't respond. Don't give them any homework, okay? Does that fly in the face of everything you've been taught on a follow-up? Probably. And that is why you follow up three times because you know what you're doing is bothering people. So forget it. Forget what you've been taught. Trust me, try this. It works. Number two, number two, your follow-up needs to be, they need to be able to read it. They need to be able to read it on um, a notification. In other words, it needs to be short Short enough that they don't have to open it, that when they look at their phone and they see those notifications, they can read your whole message. And it needs to be readable. Facebook Messenger is the best way. Text is the second best way. Why? First of all, a voice message is super annoying. If you're busy, how many of you are busy? Kids, lives, you have to stop and listen to a voice message? Forget it. I don't want to do that. And what will happen is if you send me a vo at least voicemail, which I will never listen to, at least it transcribes and I can read that somewhat. But if you send me a voice, I'm telling you guys this with love because people send me voice messages all the time. I will listen to those like the next day when I have a minute. And I'll go back and listen to them. If you send me a message, I'll see it right away. So you want them to see it on the lock screen. Why on the lock screen? because they're not gonna open your message. Because you guys know that you will not open a message that you're not planning to respond to right now. True? So here's the thing, they don't have time, stuff's happening. The baby just threw up on the dog. They gotta handle that. Your message comes through, your goal is for them to see it. That's it. They see it. And when they see that message, they are reminded of the hope and excitement they felt when they talked to you about the business, and they're reminded that you care for them. And for a split second, they have a smile and a warm, fuzzy feeling about you, and then their life takes over again. You continue to send these messages and follow up so that you can plant that emotion in their mind every couple of days, and they know your care, they know your consistency, you're building trust, and it works. Five or six uh, follow-ups in is when people will typically respond, and they'll say thank you for staying in touch with me. I'm so grateful. My life is insane. Do you guys know anybody's life who's not? I mean, in a good way. My life's insane in a good way. But we never stop. We never stop. You know, like, it's like we go on vacation. We went on vacation this year. And it was like, can we go home now? We got stuff to do. All right. <laughs> so you just have to understand that. Most people, after three um, follow-ups when they're getting crickets. How many of you guys have had that? You get crickets. They're like, that. you start creating a story. Oh, they're not, they're obviously not interested. Or I heard they're having money problems. They're probably broke. It's too expensive for them. Or I think it's, an, I think it's an issue with the, their overbearing husband, not wanting them to do it. Or you create this stuff in your mind. They're make, that's made, that's make-believe. 
people who love you and respect you and are excited still won't respond to the first three, four, five follow-ups just because that's just their life and their subconscious mind is actually protecting them from what they think is a scary, scary change situation. And so the follow-up is a psychological thing. You just got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it. You got to do it with love. You got to do it with grace and you got to be consistent. It shows people they can trust you and they can, that you care about them. The system will make it so easy. Don't even think about it. You go down your list, Connect with your prospects, connect with your customers, connect with your brand partners, work your follow-ups list. Whoever's due today, they'll turn green. I'm sorry, they turn red when they're due. They turn red, click it, see where they were, send them the next follow-up, move on. Make sense? And that's how you do it. Now let me finish off the last bit and we'll do questions. So now I've now it's been it's been you know three, four weeks, I've been following up with her, and Stephanie finally sees the opportunity and joins the team. So how do I finish her off? So I'm going to look her up again in the lookup bar, which takes me to the, to her record. I'm going to log the sale by clicking that sale button. Let's say she got the uh, launch pack because she really saw the opportunity, right? So I'm just going to save that. That just lets Teamsy know, boom, we made a sale. There was a result. Now I'll take the member type right here and I'll just click on brand partner, personally enrolled. Now she's on my team. All right, so I know you guys probably have some questions. <clears throat> if you have questions, go ahead and unmute and ask, um, and then I'll be happy to answer them for a few minutes, and then we probably all need to go to bed. I'm letting other people, does anyone have questions? I know I have one. <laughs> so Eric, I am fortunate that I have a big Facebook list, over 4,000. I probably have another 3,000 in LinkedIn. So, and I have a big income goal mm -hmm. and it's to reach out to like 14 people a day. It's a lot. But then the mass seems like I'll never get them all. Does that make sense? Is that even impossible? <laughs> um, so how do I get to them all? And then what frequency? Because I want to get to them all. I want to start this process and then it's like, how am I going to get to them all? That's my, that's my stressor. If you stay consistent, you'll cycle through your whole list. If you consistently, says, well, if you consistently reach out every day, you'll cycle through your list. Um, over time though, you are going to be deleting people for sure. You know, you're going to find people in there that are just, um, you know, that, that aren't going anywhere, but if you keep going through your list, you'll, 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 you should cycle through, um, okay. over time. You might want to pare down your list a little bit as you go, but here's the good news. Like I, I wouldn't worry about it. What you do need to do though, is you do need to go in and find out who are your fours and fives because you don't want to yeah. miss, you don't want to not get to them for six months. So what I would do is, because I know you have a big list and you probably haven't done this because you're like, that's going to take me a while, but you know, get a nice adult beverage, some music you like, <laughs> go down your list and just cherry pick your favorite people, make them fours and fives. So they show up on your list right away and they come back more often. And then don't worry about all the threes. Just, uh, just keep, keep churning your list and you'll be finding new people all the time and you'll, you'll have great momentum in your business. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then um, also, too, because, like, I live here in Palm Beach Gardens, and I want to have, oh, maybe I just set them for monthly. I'm having more frequent events, and I want a list of just the people in my area. Is there any way, or how do you recommend doing that? Like, I want that list to be, yeah. You should, you, what you want to do is tag them. Put a tag on on their record okay um either the city or just yeah. local you know whatever you want however you want to tag them it's local and then you can grab that list and you can pull them on store. oh you can do that yeah so look i'll show you an example let me go back to teamsy oh my god that's awesome so see right <laughs> that here was under stressing your, me out. <laughs> right here under your name see where it says tags i can just create a tab called local now look you can do it on the dashboard too if I'm talking to Kathy, for example, I can go to details and add a tag. So let's tag her with local. So as I'm working with people, I can tag them. So now if I'm on my team page, 
I can pull everyone with the tag local as a list. Okay, I did a whole training on tags in the Help Center, by the way, there's a bunch of different things you can use them for. You can use them for anything, but another thing that you'd wanna do is when somebody makes a purchase, you wanna tag their products. Right, so we were talking about- Oh some, my gosh, this is so We were talking about CBD, which is fun, right? So, because that was today's talk. So look, if, if Kathy bought CBD, yeah. I would tag her. Then I would know everybody that's ever bought CBD by clicking on that, which is great because you can cross promote products and things based on what people have bought in the past, which is huge, right? Um, everybody that's that's been using this product, they probably like that product. So, so when you when you have like a special on something, you know, then you know who to get, who to connect with. You don't spend a lot of time worried about it. You go, oh my gosh, we have a special on this. Here's everybody who's ordered in the past. Let me just message everybody that ordered in the past and let them know there's a special on. This actually just came up um, to camp. Somebody asked me, they go, Eric, how do I deal with a, a sale without being salesy? I'm trying to do the teens and philosophy. Like, uh, I want to tell people like, oh, hi, and there's a sale. I'm like, no, you go to your customers and your past customers um, and focus on them with the sale and get a whole bunch of sales. And they're excited to hear about this, right? Makes sense. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I would do is I would just use the tag. Cool. Yeah. Oh, can you hear me or? Yeah, you break up a little bit, but I can. I, I'm hanging with you. Okay. Um, that's brilliant. Now, here's another thing. I know Purium, and I'll get with you some of the updates. Can you still hear me? Um, mm -hmm. They've hired a um, email marketing company to do yeah. a lot of the follow-ups for us. How do we then go and, because I'm like, that's great. That's awesome. They're getting notifications of everything. But at the same time, sh from a system, should we like message them? Hey, just want to make sure you got the email that, you know, you get free shipping now. Or um, is that what you recommend? Okay. So um, two pieces to that. One is people typically open one to three percent of their emails right um so that's why you guys will every once in a while when we're marketing something you get like three emails a day from me for a week because i know you'll read three of them but so email is you know you can't rely on email to do anything but i don't want to overcomplicate your your system if you just stay in touch with your customers just on the teamsy flow just stay in touch with them. You'll have opportunities to tell them about what's going on. Just, just go with the flow. Now, there, there are going to be moments where you want to do like some sort of cool campaign or whatever because you've got a great promotion. But typically, I would just, um, just keep, keep, if you're staying in touch with them all the time, they're in touch with you. And what will happen is they will look at those emails more often and they will look at your posts more often because they're engaged with you. Does that make sense? And so um, it's so funny because mm -hmm. I still consult with real estate people too, just for fun. And, um, you know, when you're regularly messaging people, they, when they come, when it comes up, when they think about it or they need something, they have such an easy way to get in touch with you because they just respond to that message. You know what I mean? So, so you messaging regularly, them getting emails from corporate makes them more likely to go, bam, I just saw that email. I want to get this or whatever. So, so don't over worry about it, um, but if there are opportunities where you guys can create some momentum around a sales promotion. Um, what I will tell you is if you get consistent just doing the TV connecting, you will have so much momentum, you might be a little overwhelmed and not want to add more. That's a good thing, right? Um, I know, yeah. You will create now, a lot of momentum. Yeah. So I actually, because I hadn't, done this full training and I, I started using it, but I will say I was overwhelmed by what it took. I think I was doing, I'm an emotional person. I'm maybe some people call me an energy impact. So I really connect people in a heartfelt way. So I was doing the, let me go check out everything about them on Facebook and take 15 minutes to send one message so the fact that you're like, Phew, and then you do it later, that's so much better. So it is more generic and not as um, specific to that person, you know? Yeah, you just, just so try to start the conversation good. first. 
because half of them won't respond. You don't need to invest energy in them yet. Make sense? Yeah, I like, so, yeah, totally. You will still have deep connection. Can I, let, can I share something with you guys? I know my wife's probably wondering when I'm gonna get out of here too, but I, I let me share this with you. Um, so I do a boot camp. I do a high level boot camp every quarter and um, let me just share this with you guys real quick. This is today's post. This is today's post in the boot camp. Um, this was my post. I said, how did you lead with love today? Because today's training was on how to lead with love. How did you lead with love today? And these are some of the comments. Look at this. I had a great conversation yesterday that was a follow-up from a lead interested in a tower garden. This is a Juice Plus person. Once I gave her the information, her comment was very brash. That's way too expensive, she said. Even, I, I don't mean to be rude. I immediately said, oh no, I don't feel like you're rude at all. You're probably just very surprised. Then I took our conversation back to gratitude for a gift she'd given my daughter for a new baby coming soon. This conversation turned into a beautiful conversation about her mother losing her cancer battle, my cancer battle, and how grateful my daughter should be to have her mom. Um, it was a perfect example of what we were learning here. It may not have started out as leading with love because it was simply a lead for a product, but I was able to connect with the whole heart. So, th so thank you so much for this week's training. Do you think she has a better chance of actually making that sale as she builds trust with this person? For sure, you know? Um, this one says, I've been using the apology script since I've spammed a lot of people in three years. It's been working great. So I have a script that apologizes for blasting people the wrong way. Um, I reached out to connect on her birthday. We recognized each other from church. Her son was in the hospital. She shared with me and asked me to pray for her family. It was pretty powerful. So these people are, are creating some authentic conversations with people with this whole concept. I love this one. Have had three orders in the last 36 hours. <laughs> That's good. So you guys get the idea like this, this becomes more than just a business tactic you start connecting with those and, and those deep connections that are happening are coming from those generic starter scripts. You know, it's just connecting personally with somebody and, and saying, how are you? Hope you're, how are you doing? You know, and people are like, wow, somebody actually wants to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. This is amazing. Nobody does this. Make sense. So it's very powerful. You guys, um, some of those conversations will fizzle. Some people won't respond. Some people will, and you focus on them and you go for it. Make sense. And over time, as you've messaged people, let's say somebody comes up every three months and they don't respond and they don't respond and they don't respond. And then suddenly they will, because each time they get your message, they're thinking about you. They're looking at what you're doing. They're getting closer to you. Make sense. So I hope that was really helpful to you guys. I know we've been on the call a long time. You guys have had a bunch of calls. You're probably soggy. Here's what I encourage you to do. Get your 30 day free trial of Teamsy started. That's a no brainer. Go in there and use it. I will tell you this. If you use it for 30 days, you'll end up loving it. We'll both win. You'll get a, you'll build your business. I'll get you as part of my Teamsy family. That's beautiful. It's a win-win. Get a 30 day success partner to do the free trial with you. Highly recommend this. Sideline sister, brother, someone on your team, whatever, somebody who's motivated like you, say, let's do this for 30 days. Let's really do it, okay? Share your whys with each other, whole thing. And what I want you to do each day when you complete your dashboard goals for Teamsy, you're gonna get this little thing that says 100%, you crushed it from Teamsy. I want you to screen grab that and text it over to your success partner every day. Because what'll happen is you'll blow it off, but they won't, and it'll piss you off. You'll have to do it. or vice versa, right? And so where you might've done Teamsy two days in a week with a success partner, you'll probably get it done four, maybe five days in a week. And that will create so much more momentum for you. Does that make sense? So get a success partner, um, do the 30 day free trial. And I've got a final challenge for you. And that's this, a five day challenge. Okay. Who likes challenges? In five days, I want you to do five days in a row with Teamsy, five days in a row with Teamsy, 20 connects a day. For five days, that's 100 people in five days. Outgoing messages. Why do I want you to do that? I want you to feel the overwhelming momentum you can create in just five days. You're gonna be having so many conversations. I want you to do that so you can go, wow, if I can generate this momentum in five days, how would it look like six months of compounding consistency doing this? Does that make sense? So, um, Again, and you don't need to do this seven days a week. Teams gives you a daily goal, but it's based on a 270-day 200, year. 
So we expect you to take weekends and have vacations and stuff. Just do the most you can do the best you can. Sound good? So um, let me send you guys on your way. Thank you guys. Thank you for inviting me, Stephanie. I hope this was helpful. I'll get you the, the link, playback link tomorrow so that we can send this video viral through the Purium network, <laughs> which would be cool. And, um, and so thank you guys for having me. On. What's that? Impact on people. I love it that I have a group of people on my team on this call. We'll definitely take that challenge. Awesome. So again, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. I'm, I'm honored to be here. God bless you. Have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys.